Tonight on Prison and Politics, with the value of commissary stamps falling, should the prison economy go back to the cigarette standard? Monitoring who checks out the Quran, library paperwork, or coded racism? And is 2017 the year the Aryan nation takes back control of cell block D? Welcome to Prison and Politics, the only talk show about the politics of the East Toronto Detention Center. I am your host, former journalist and defamed senator, currently serving six to eight years on corruption charges, Ethan Samuelson, and I am joined today by 8-Ball Chris, who is here to talk to us about the recruiting efforts of white nationalists in our very own yard. Hello, Mr. 8-Ball. Pleasure. Please call me Chris. Mr. 8-Ball is my father. Okay. Chris? A rise in populist rhetoric and rapidly declining prison conditions have people clinging to identity politics in a way that we haven't seen in decades. Well, people are fed up with the status quo, Ethan. They're sick of the guards. They're sick of the elites in the nation of Islam all telling them what to do. Our message resonates with the prisoners all across the system. And what message is that? White power. Do you honestly think that you can come out on top in next week's planned prison riot, given the demographic disadvantage of white supremacists? First of all, we're race realists. Second, what we lack in sheer numbers, we make up for it enthusiasm. Now that's a good point. How do you energize your base so well? Well, we stick to a simple talking point. The immigrants are stealing all the best prison labor. We need to take back the laundry room. Well, uh, thank you for sharing your message with us, Chris, and thank you for getting me out of that domestically violent situation with my cellmate. Well, what can I say? We're protectionists. <laughs> We are out of time! Join us next week when we'll find out, now that Paul Bernardo has been denied parole once again, which prison gang gets dibs on him this time. <laughs>